What I'm going to try to explain today, if I'm lucky, is the difference between grounding and bonding. Now grounding, I actually consider it a, not really the proper term to be used for what ground usually provides. It doesn't provide a path to earth to clear faults. It provides a path through the neutral of the circuit back to the pole so that the high amperage draw will clear any faults, open a breaker. Bonding is the connection of metal devices, usually uh, panels, uh, appliances, things like that, to neutral to clear faults. Now let's try to explain a little further. Here's a 200 amp panel. Now this is the main panel. So here we have a metal casing that's bonded. Now that means I connect it here to the uh, neutral bar which is connected to the ground. So it's all interconnected here. So that if there was a fault that energized this panel, there would be a path from the panel itself to the neutral to go out to the pole and clear the fault. Here's an electrical box. Now it's metal. It has to be bonded too. So it's going to be bonded true to what is called the ground wire back to the main panel where it will connect to the neutral and will clear any faults. So this has to be bonded. Here's a part inside that was probably going to be mounted inside an electrical box. Okay, it's metal there's power going through this thing and so power could pass through this uh, bracket if there was a, a short, a fault in this thing that energized the metal part it would go to this piece which would go to the box itself which would go back and clear through neutral. Here's another one this thing does not have to be bonded or grounded. <clears throat> if you look close, you can see this thing has a two-pronged plug. That's factory. It's a double insulated drill. If it's double insulated, it's considered that it cannot short to any metal parts of this tool. Like this is metal here, but this is double insulated, so it's considered that this could not be energized. So it does not need a ground. So different parts, depending on the way they're designed, will have to be uh, bonded or not bonded. Okay, let's follow this through. There's 120 volts coming into this. This thing needs to be bonded through to this panel so that if I had a part somewhere in this that shorted to the chassis, that is the box, this whole assembly, if it shorted to it, then it would have a path through the ground wire back to this panel, which is connected to neutral, so the power would go from this chassis part to the ground on the panel to the neutral which will go out to the transformer and will clear that fault. So this can't be energized. If this was, if this was energized for some reason due to a fault inside there, we do not want this to be what we call hot or energized. So once that fault travels to the chassis, it travels back to the uh, panel and to the transformer 
and the fault's cleared, the breaker opens, so there, there's no danger here. Now, bonding is, in many ways it's the same thing as ground, because when I have this uh, box bonded to this panel, it's bonded through the ground wire. There's three wires coming to this. Hot, neutral, and the ground. The ground should never carry uh, current unless there's a fault. So it should always have that, what I call a virgin wire, the ground wire, that would go back to the panel and clear the fault. If for some reason I lost the connection between this little panel and uh, here, then this would become hot. And if I touched it and I happened to be touching some other metal pipe or something that was grounded, earth grounded, I would get a shock off it. So is there anything else we actually bond? Now here I have a piece of black iron pipe commonly used for natural gas piping. Does it need to be bonded? Absolutely. This needs to be to have a good solid bond to the neutral so that if it becomes energized it has a path to clear that fault. Now how could this become energized? As an aside, we have a union on this. We can't bond through a union because there are oftentimes unions, well, the old ones used to have a gasket on them. Uh, it's not considered a good continuity. So let's say I have a gas furnace and I have a union. You have to have a union at the appliance. Do, and this is a pipe going back to the meter. If this is not bonded and it became energized, you say, well, how can a pipe become energized? I actually saw this happen once. I drilled a hole to run my pipe through the outside wall, and I don't know what I hit, but I didn't notice anything until... I went to hook this thing up to the gas appliance and I got a shock off it. All I can think of is I had drilled the hole fairly close to a, uh, uh, a Romex wire that had a staple on it that had penetrated the insulation of the uh, Romex and the uh, staple was uh, contacting the pipe. So it actually got this pipe hot. So this can happen. So if there was a case like that, then it could be bonded to a, a ground wire. And so that if for some reason this became hot, the, the fault would clear through the neutral in the pan. Faults do not clear to earth ground. I can take earth ground as one of my uh, electrodes and take a hot wire and run it through a load to earth ground and I'll usually get some sort of load out of it, some sort of power usage, but at these low voltages it's very little. It's enough to electrocute you, that's why we bond, but it's not enough to clear faults. So it has to be connected to the neutral in some way. Now, uh, many boxes like this were for many years, you could use metallic conduit as the grounding electrode. Uh, in almost all cases, that's gone now, fortunately. Um, conduit's notorious for getting loose and not being tight on the box 
so I couldn't count on having a clear path to the neutral through the panel. So uh, most of that's gone now and it has a separate ground wire. So hopefully this makes sense on grounding and bonding. But we are bonding metal to metal to make sure that no metal parts can be energized without a path to the neutral on the pole. Same thing with metal water pipes. We bond metal water pipes to uh, the panel in the metal pipe where it contacts something that has a hot lead to it, the fault will clear through the panel and to the neutral. Hope this one makes sense.